Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you for inviting me to this conference. Um, I, I know that I'm a little bit from the different uh, um, different institution than, than people mostly here. I'm not from academic side. I'm not even lawyer, even if I'm working with consumer law. And um, I will try to talk uh, uh, to you about the work we do in the Consumer Rights Protection Center, uh, not only also in the uh, European Union level, as well as ch challenges which we see in, in this uh, new digital era. Of course, uh, uh, mostly I, I think I will, uh, I will uh, ask questions, <laughs> like rhetoric questions, and uh, we, we still, of course, do not have answers on anything, but everything but uh, but uh, but uh, to show how wide is uh, consumer protection and that on, not only academics but also uh, government is uh, thinking of of, um, of new developments um, yes i hope i will deal with this i'm not very uh, uh, very uh, sophisticated in in techniques <laughs> and uh, yes if we speak about di digital um, era then i'm from the consumers who will try the last, the new things. I will check when it's safe and only then try. But uh, I know that young people are different and we very need young people who are trying and we get innovations. And then people like me look at risks. Wait. She does like them, yeah. So, uh, uh, the, uh, some uh, introduction about the consumer uh, policy as such. Uh, it's quite a young policy, as we know. It started from 1962 with the speech of the Kennedy about the basic rights of the uh, consumer. Uh, consumer, And uh, um, in Latvia, uh, this, uh, this right is even uh, in younger. And uh, we can say that the, it started in Latvia only uh, from 1992, when the first consumer rights protection law was written. And um, yes, I was starting to work in the Ministry of Economy with consumer protection in 1995. So the law was already there. And I remember that uh, the main issue about the consumer rights protection law at that time was uh, that uh, there were, to be honest, very good rules in the law, but uh, they were not really working in the practice. Uh, the, uh, there was not really system of enforcement. There was not system of um, consumer complaints handling. So everything was left to consumer as such. Uh, the only institution we had at that time, it was trade, uh, uh, trade Supervision Committee and later Trade and Services uh, uh, Supervision Center, uh, whose main task was look at if products are with markings in the shops uh, and uh, sometimes also uh, help people to solve complaints uh, directly with entrepreneurs, but it was not very active. Uh, active uh, procedures there. Um, yes, I think that the very good uh, thing for Latvia was our membership in the European Union. And I'm not saying because it's popular, but because in area where I am working, almost everything is coming from the, consum uh, from the uh, European Union directives. And um, that was my first job to do in the Ministry of Economy. We were working with uh, implementing uh, EU directives in Latvian laws. Um, we were learning very much in, in Europe and then trying to, to get it in our laws. And uh, the, I can say that the most difficult was my, one of my favorite laws, which is, uh, or regulations we can say, is the regulations about the unfair contract terms. And it was big, really big fight in our uh, every institution, in uh, all ministries, uh, all uh, entrepreneur organizations, parliament. Everybody was against. Nobody understood that because uh, it was very popular to think that the civil um, and private, uh, like private law, it means that you can decide what you want, and if you have uh, signed a contract, then. Yeah, then that's fair always because you have discussed it and then it's fair. So it was really big fight with everybody uh, to get this uh, in the law. And even afterwards, it was very big fight to let it um, start uh, to implement it um, in, uh, in real life. 
um, we we had to start we, we had to start um, enforcement case with every bank in Latvia at that time uh, because the banks are mostly the historically the uh, type of uh, institutions which have quite many uh, terms which can be unfair and the second one is insurance which is also quite uh, quite important for from that point of view, and we, yeah, we we did big job to to start uh, this uh, to work, and and now I can say that uh, in uh, general, um, mostly entrepreneurs uh, follow the rules, not waiting for enforcement. I think that's very big success, and it's, that's that's I think it's attitude in most of the European Union countries, and finally, it's coming also to Latvia. And uh, yes, if we speak about uh, uh, changes, uh, uh, that's my feeling because I, I've been here quite long, that about 2015 it was starting to change so fast. Uh, probably it started a little bit earlier, but when it came to enforcers uh, like me, it was maybe a little bit later, starting with smartphones and smart goods and everything, which was changing uh, everything totally. Also, globalization of, uh, of uh, markets, uh, people buying online has changed very, very much. And to be honest, yes, we have uh, quite a difficult uh, task ahead of us. Um, yes, uh, I was just uh, writing some, some ideas about the main rights, uh, consumer protection rights we have. Um, uh, we have, and that's uh, mostly from uh, United Nations principles, guidelines on consumer protection. That's not all of them, but I think that's the most important, which we are uh, involved in and uh, related with um, digital issues as such as well. Uh, I think that the main uh, main ideas we are in our office working is, one is economic interest, for example, this uh, Unfair contract terms regulation is for your economic interest, so, you, so the contracts are fair, uh, advertising has to be good, uh, not mislead you, and so on. Uh, information requirements are very important. Uh, consumer protect, uh, consumers are uh, entitled to information uh, to, to, to be able to choose what they want. So that's also uh, the issue we are working very much uh, uh, on. Um, then uh, safety and health, that's also a big part of our work. I'll, I will talk about that later as well. And uh, the interesting issues, I think, is which is in recent years coming, uh, not only with digital, but in recent years, it's thinking of vulnerable people who are not, uh, uh, who are like vulnerable because of some, uh, some, um, some reasons and that the policy shouldn't be the same and enforcement probably shouldn't be the same for everyone, but you have to take it into account that uh, in some groups can be vulnerable. For example, this is quite, uh, quite often uh, one of the groups is children. You work differently than there is issues about children. It could be um, online advertising for children. Uh, we have worked quite much on uh, uh, games for children. What's information given for children? Can they buy uh, without parents' consent uh, something in games and so on? Uh, so there is also uh, issues about o uh, older people who have uh, some uh, problems sometimes to understand something or, or disabled people who have uh, in other problems. And also uh, when you speak about advertising, vulnerable people are also people who have specific illnesses. They are very vulnerable when you promise them some miracle cures with uh, some uh, nutritional um, food, food supplements, uh, you promise them uh, to get health and, and they believe you just because they very much want to be, um, want to have health. So that's an uh, yeah, interesting issue. Uh, the new principle which we, uh, fortunately we had, uh, our law was quite well written from that point of view and that's uh, in many countries, it's big discussions and, uh, and fights, but uh, in, uh, in Latvia it's not a problem. Uh, we consider that level of protection has to be the same in the online and offline uh, market. We have the law which is quite, uh, quite wide, so from our point that's, uh, that's not a uh, big problem. But of course, again, that's, uh, that's a question about the um, real enforcement of this right. Um, possibility uh, for consumer to prove 
different effects and so on, and for us to control uh, online. And the new thing, uh, maybe you would think it's not consumer protection directly, but uh, privacy has uh, come into our lives uh, with uh, and hand in hand with consumer protection issues. I will mention some some interesting um, um, thinkings which we have had in in our circle of enforcers. Probably you know even more. Um, Yes, a little bit about our center. I don't know if everybody knows that, but uh, Consumer Rights Protection Center in Latvia, we, we, we have quite a wide uh, competence. We, we, we have um, the Consumer Rights Protection Law, which regulates unfair, commercial, uh, unfair com contract terms, uh, product conformity, that's when you buy, for example, electronic product and uh, it bre uh, breaks down, uh, then you have the right to, to repair it or something, that kind of law. Uh, provision of information is regulated in that law and some specific areas where you consider that consumer has to be specifically protected, like in consumer credit, uh, package travel, um, distance sales, and uh, many areas we have very specific rules for consumer protection. Uh, we are also an uh, institution which is handling consumer complaints. We have an uh, alternative dispute resolution system in our office. Judges coming to our office to decide on, on complaints. Um, and uh, bad companies are uh, put on our um, blacklist, which you can find on our homepage. So. And uh, I think one of the most interesting parts of our work is uh, control of advertising and unfair commercial practices. And um, probably you know that unfair commercial practices is quite a new, uh, new laws, at least in, in, uh, in Europe uh, in general, it's just from 2008, uh, this directive. So uh, it, it's uh, one more I like very much because it gives us uh, very good possibilities to protect consumers in cases where you do not have specific laws uh, written. Uh, and also we are an institution responsible for product safety uh, of almost all non-food products. Um, so we go to market and, and check the products if they are good. We test the products and um, I will talk about that as well. And product liability, that's not like legislation we have to enforce. That's more maybe academic <laughs> thinking. But uh, unfortunately, Latvian people... Uh, do not want to recognize goods of this legislation. Uh, and I haven't seen that somebody has went to court really, but uh, the legislation is very good because it gives you like direct uh, responsibility, on, puts on, on the uh, businesses. For example, if something happens with a, with a computer, I don't know, don't want to, to name the brand, but uh, anyone, then the producer is always responsible. And if something happened to your health or to your property, then you can ask for damages uh, and do not have to prove that entrepreneur was not doing his job well. I think that's very good legislation. We have had some complaints, but, but nobody has used it at, as soon as I, as far as I know, uh, nobody has used it in the court. Um, Yes, yeah, so um, what can I say is that I think that in Latvia and, and, most, and in Europe, uh, the consumer policy is, is in place. Um, probably you know that we are also since, I think, 2016, we are also, or 17, we are also a member of the OECD. So it's recognized that our, our laws are, are um, um, in line with OECD principles. Uh, consumer protection is quite an important part in that. And uh, that what, what we and in Europe also, uh, I think we uh, recognize as the most important things in the consumer policy at the moment is that um, uh, there is need for effective enforcement um, because laws are written but not always working very well. Uh, it also related not only with the capacity maybe of the institutions but also with all, all these new developments. I will also speak uh, a little bit later. And product safety is still the issue. Maybe you don't see it on the street <laughs> like uh, every day, but, uh, but it is issue when we test products. We see that, uh, uh, for example, thing, 
things you will never notice is like chemical risks, uh, which um, can do you harm, and you will see it only after 20 years. You will never know that it's because you did or bought something 20 years ago. So I think that's quite important that that uh, the enforcement is effective in these uh, these areas. So a little bit about uh, how it has been changing uh, slowly. Uh, the, still in Latvia, I can say that uh, the consumers come to our office mostly because uh, quality of products hasn't been uh, good. We buy shoes, uh, mobile phones, and they are not working. So people want money back or repair or something. That's uh, the most uh, things when people come. Unfortunately, still a little bit more now, but still not enough from my point of view. People do not inform us enough about uh, um, some problems they see, like uh, from marketing point of view, or, uh, or yes, like unfair commercial practices. Of course, that's difficult to see that, uh, but uh, that's uh, something which we, where we lack information because uh, we cannot check everything ourselves. We need uh, signals from the market as well. Uh, yes, but uh, but recent developments in what what are problems of consumers are are um, not always um, like uh, nice. And one of the uh, most uh, um, uh, worst problem from my point of view is non-delivery, and that's uh, mostly will be related with uh, development of e-commerce. It's uh, very very tough problem in Latvia, the internet shops, which sometimes are even uh, specifically made for cheating people. They sell products and they don't deliver. Then they close down and then on the different name, they make new one. And we have every year um, some five to 10 uh, companies uh, who cheat, uh, cheat people in, uh, in this method. So it's um, one of the like, um, side effect of, uh, of e-commerce and uh, we very much try to teach people how to act with this because uh, sometimes you can see that it's risk. Uh, people very often use just these comparative sites on the internet and buy the cheapest one in the cheapest place. I always say that's not the, the good thing to do. I always advise not to pay in advance, especially by bank transfer. Uh, if you pay by card, that's better much. And in Latvia, it's still we very often pay when product comes to your house. So that's safer from that point of view. But that's very Latvian problem. Uh, I think that's maybe not everywhere in Europe so much um, because there are people mostly pay with credit cards and then you have uh, some protection. Um. Yes, and, and since uh, it's, it's not very young, uh, very new rights, but, uh, but it's uh, for, for our people, it's only after we, we uh, were in the European Union, it's uh, our rights in distance sales. It was also very, um, uh, like, um, I think, uh, for our businessmen, it was very difficult to accept that they have to give money back for the product with no reason. Uh, I think that's very good rights for the consumers, but it's also very big uh, challenges for the entrepreneurs. I don't know how much you know about recent legislative um, processes in European Union, but there are discussions about uh, this. Uh, for example, when uh, then uh, ladies buy the um, uh, dress uh, they use for one time going to the um, ball and then coming back and, and sending back the uh, dress uh, should uh, they give all money back or not <laughs> and there was uh, um, I, I think it's in the proposal of the European Commission was that uh, uh, you do not have withdrawal rights if you have used more than in the shop but uh, I think it will not be adopted that it will stay as it is that uh, consumer protection goes first you always have rights and if entrepreneur thinks you have worn it then he has to go if you don't agree then go to court against you uh, so that's, uh, yeah. Uh, concept of consumer, I was just mentioning, you know, it's uh, always a natural person. It's, uh, that's we, why we have this uh, protection is because it's, uh, 
uh, weaker part of the contract, it's uh, consumer, but um, uh, recently uh, with new developments, uh, it's very much changing because consumers sometimes sell possibility to live in his house. Consumers uh, sometimes buy some, for example, investment products, which always is interesting. Is it business or what? And uh, this, uh, like, uh, there are some some uh, areas where we always discuss: is this still consumer? And uh, yeah, that, that's main. I think. Um, Yes, and, and of course, uh, the new products are coming, although I have to say that in Latvia we do not have many complaints about that, about smart goods and such uh, products. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, maybe most of people are like me, which don't buy very smart products and I still don't think it's something very needed. Like, for example, electric kettle, I still don't understand why you need it. And uh, I remember uh, my friend bought, I think one of the first, uh, maybe not first, but in Latvia, it was quite new, one of the uh, smart TVs. And uh, I was staying there for night and I, I wanted to switch it off and you know, I couldn't. But the only thing which, uh, which it understood was always working well. It was when Parrot, they had Parrot, and it was, uh, it, when Parrot was speaking, he was uh, switching off. So I, I never, never understand with these smart goods on what they react. Probably they are better now. It was beginning of the smart goods. And also when they had very small kid at that time, and sometimes also then kid was saying something, then it was also doing something, but, uh, but like when I was trying to do what's written on the, on uh, on this um, on documents, it, it never worked. <laughs> so, but I hope it's better now. But I still don't buy smart smart TVs. I will wait when it will be for sure good. <laughs> um, um. Also, uh, yes, uh, not, not to think that everything is bad. <laughs> it, there are these changes which are coming with digital, uh, digital era. Probably I will just mention some of them, which was first, which I was uh, thinking, um, uh, which I have seen in my work and, and uh, which has changed afterwards the, uh, some, some, uh, some business models, for example, uh, uh, the easy access to credits, I, I don't know from which countries you all are, but in Latvia, uh, SMS credits uh, at the time when um, it was, to be honest, I think it was time when smartphones started to be available and they could uh, give you uh, information which is required by the law, then that was the moment then when they could give you credit through mobile phone and afterwards also, I think, started in computer. The, uh, the business of credits very much changed. Uh, our people very much uh, use these, um, uh, these uh, small credits. And uh, there are some risks which we see in this business. Um, there have been quite a few cases uh, in police uh, about uh, unauthorized use of these credits. People not always very, uh, very good, uh, um, very protect their uh, internet uh, bank uh, data. So somehow they steal these and take credits on your name. Uh, probably also some other methods to do that. And also the problem of credit worthiness assessment. Uh, they just use uh, information which, which you give and give you very fast uh, credit. Of course, when they promise you do it in 15 minutes, it's not very serious. Um, and so that's why in Latvia it has been a big problem. And um, the policy making is trying to fix it, but unfortunately mostly in political way than in, uh, in like substantive way. Um, and uh, yes, uh, adopting laws uh, one day before elections, which happened last, last time, which we, I now have to cope with from 1st July, which is quite, uh, yeah, quite difficult one. It would be interesting for academics to, <laughs> to interpret that law. Um, yes, and, and that, yeah. Uh, platforms, uh, which, uh, with which I mean, uh, like, uh, you are using very much probably Amazon and Alibaba and eBay. And, uh, th of course, there are much more things uh, which are risks there. But, of course, there are good things you have 
much bigger possibilities, uh, wider choices and everything. But of course, you also have risks. And one of the risks we see in our office is that uh, consumers often buy from the private persons, not knowing that they buy from private persons. They do not know that they do not have consumer rights. And that's, of course, uh, uh, totally different from when you buy from a uh, commercial part. Um, also, with these platforms, uh, um, safety of products has, uh, uh, I think, it's a big issue. It's very tough for us to get the real responsible person there. Uh, the good thing is that the European Commission has signed the agreement, I think, this year with four platforms, uh, Amazon, eBay, Alibaba, I think, and, and uh, one French, uh, that they will... Um, um, cooperate with us as enforcement authorities to take out unsafe products and and um, and um, handle consumer complaints. I hope it uh, will do some good. But anyway, that's just the market in this way is so huge that uh, for us it's a big issue. And um, counterfeit products as well are very much uh, sold on these platforms. Sharing economies uh, as well, mostly I think it's cars and homes, Airbnb, we could say taxify, but I really don't think it's sharing economy, which we have in Latvia, because it should be that you like, just, um, um, you go to Liepāja and then you take someone with you, that would be really sharing economy. That's, from my point of view in Latvia, is only uh, like allowed business for, for, for people who are not uh, regularly working as, as uh, taxis. But, but anyway, that's in, in other countries, it's more like that. Uh, yes, and there are many issues about security. Uh, in, in these, uh, there are no any licensing of that companies and so on. You are quite, uh, yeah, there can happen different things. And, uh, Fair competition, of course, and tax paying, that already has been also publicly about the companies because, uh, yeah, there are different, the, the people who are doing this business, they not always pay that taxes, but taxi companies and, or uh, uh, hotels. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer platforms, it was uh, when, yeah, when you use platform to do business with another consumer probably, in Latvia, we, we have had we had have platforms, but um, on credit, for example. But uh, we consider from Latvian uh, law it's prohibited because our creditors has to have licenses, and if it's private person, then it has not. And at the moment, we have stopped it. But uh, the law, which would allow this um, peer-to-peer platforms, are uh, are on the way, but but not yet adopted. Yes, um, some issues are al already mentioned, uh, which we are working on. And, and what was interesting for me uh, about smart goods and Internet of Things, um, again, I'm not expert but, uh, on that, but uh, um, there were quite interesting um, presentations from colleagues uh, uh, in one product safety in, um, in Brussels. For example, about this kettle, uh, which I still don't understand why you need uh, uh, to <laughs> switch it on and then just go in a minute to take it, or, or before you come home. I think you shouldn't be so lazy, but uh, if, especially if difference is uh, for the product, which uh, I think the, the, uh, this um, te technology costs about two euros, I think he said, but uh, kettle costs 100 euros more than than normal one. So I, I still don't understand that, but again, the risk which this product had was uh, that uh, uh, you don't have even to be hacker, but and you can find every place in London where you have it. So it's very easy to hack it. The pin code, I think, was even in the documents. And uh, the, the, of course, you, um, you, you can change it, but, uh, but that's... Um, uh, but not everybody knows that. You as consumers mostly don't know these risks, especially with the new products. We are just starting uh, to look at these uh, uh, new issues. 
And of course, again, uh, these products which are speaking each to other, uh, Internet of Things, they can buy uh, uh, washing powder if it's not enough and, and everything. And there are also quite difficult issues for consum consumer protection, protection agencies because um, the, um, who, which company is responsible? That's quite interesting issue. Is it who produced software or hardware or so on? Um, yeah, so artificial intelligence again is used there and sometimes in products and and responsibility is still not clear. Uh, that's something which Europe is uh, going to work on. Also some digital marketing environment, for example in Latvia very popular is now buying in Facebook and again the same as platforms, uh, uh, that's, it, it's private persons who sell you but you think you have consumer rights. We have very many complaints from consumers. Uh, uh, new advertising forms, influencers, it's uh, not always too easy uh, to prove that they are really working, that they're not just saying it because they like something. And uh, they are very influential because, uh, for example, in Latvia there was a case and a young girl was, um, was um, uh, as influencer, was uh, selling uh, or influencing to buy products which was very bad to young girls, slimming products, which was really, uh, really bad from, from health point of view. And, uh, and that's uh, quite a tricky issue as well for us as enforcer to get, uh, to get this um, advertising and to tackle it. And ratings, reviews, uh, we, we made some, uh, some research, uh, I think, a few years ago. In Latvia, we saw that Latvians are not very much looking at ratings and reviews, but anyway, it's very important from our point of view, and international society thinks that this should be fair. If you say bad things, they should also be on the home page. If you say good, they should be, and not, not like unfair. It has to be in fair way. Mm. That I will skip because there is no, I'm quite slow. Yeah, uh, yes, about product safety, which one of our main issues, uh, which I would still take uh, say yes, um, yes, a little bit maybe about the consumer behavior. What we see as a problem in Latvia is we could, as uh, as enforcement authority, more tackle product safety. The problem very often is that consumers like those products. They are very satisfied with products bought from Alibaba. Uh, the only thing they are not satisfied uh, is uh, when customs take them off these products because they are counterfeit. And that's the only problem that the consumers see. And again, I mentioned you about these chemical risks. Uh, when uh, our agencies in Europe has tested products on uh, these, um, uh, for example, Alibaba uh, uh, platforms selling to you, that's awful chemical risks in that product. For example, jewelry, which was just, uh, just a very high amounts of, uh, of chemicals which are prohibited in Europe. So, yeah. Um, uh, so a little bit about privacy. I will not talk much about that. That's new thing also. Is it, uh, for example, in uh, enforcement, it's very important. Is it our task or its task of st data st state data inspection? But, uh, but as I mentioned, uh, many people also know uh, that uh, when you use Facebook, they are using your data. Uh, you probably, uh, is there anybody who has read all the, uh, all the rules, uh, contract terms of Facebook? Probably no, uh, me too, I'm not. And uh, that's, um, that's the issue and um, yeah, there are some, some issues we have seen and y if you will have this uh, presentation, you can check this, uh, it's about datings, uh, dating uh, pages where you can meet people and you put their, your photos. And the rules in those dating pages very often is that they can do whatever they want with your photos, your private photos. So uh, people not all, you, you not read those and they do things which they shouldn't. And uh, there was an interesting experiment. Uh, you can uh, find it in the internet when uh, famous people in Norway were reading uh, 36 uh, rules of uh, 36 applications you use on uh, on, uh, on your phones, and it took 36 hours to read it. 36 hours to read it. It was famous people reading it. So if you want to know everything, you have to. 36, it's like one working week to read it. 
Uh, one case which is very interesting, uh, nobody has still, um, uh, yes, we, we don't have solution which is the sponsor, which re legislation applies to it, but uh, it's the doll uh, you, your kid can talk to and um, the data are sent to the private company and they can do whatever they want with data. They can use uh, the voice of your child and of course, many other risks can be there. I'm not, uh, yes, uh, we haven't, uh, I, I don't know if we have it in Latvia, but uh, yes, and they also, kids are also subject to hidden marketing with this. They are like, uh, 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 the doll is advertising some things like Disney movies and so on to you. Um, uh, yes, some things which we do for this is, uh, I think we can never do everything which comes on our table and for that, from that point of view it's important that entrepreneurs work with us. Uh, we try to consult people, we have such, such uh, uh, activity like consult first. Uh, we also try to help uh, big, uh, big shops uh, to, um, to implement uh, internal systems how to not buy bad products, like auditing method, which hasn't been previously used. It's used in only in few countries in the European Union. Uh, it's uh, um, expensive for, uh, for the government, but I think that's better because then those products are not coming to our... Uh, our then business do, does it themselves. And... Um, of course, international cooperation is very important because we already see that uh, when we tackle something in Latvia, it goes through Lithuania, and we always have to work together. That's why we have uh, uh, specific uh, networks in Europe, CPC network, where we work together. We work with our colleagues in Lat Lithuania and Estonia. We have uh, programs how to not, put, not let the same products in Lithuania through the border, which we prohibited in Latvia. For example, this book which I have put there, that's uh, how influencers have to behave. We have, it's uh, international uh, community of consumer enforcers has uh, prepared. We have uh, made our uh, views how you should inform that it's paid advertising and so on. Uh, yes, it's uh, not enough time for me. Yes, we also have local ones. We quite often use this possibility to write guidelines where we see that the entrepreneur, many entrepreneurs are doing uh, not right things for consumers. We write the guidelines how you should behave to observe the law. It helps very much. We don't start enforcement case for every entrepreneur, but we do guidelines. It's many people do that. M many countries do that. Um, and. Yes, a little bit about consumer policy making. I will not go in details, but I think that's the new thing uh, which, which I like very much. We are starting at least thinking about behavior of people. And one bad example until now I still think is consumer credit. I don't know how, how you recently taken credit card or something, but they give you like document like this with small, small letters with many things which have been required by EU law to write you, but you, you can't read it and you can't understand it. It's very, it's very difficult though for the people. So I think at least now European Union also uh, thinks about uh, how people behave when they need cons uh, this um, legislation, uh, information. Of course, it not, it's not always working. We know that uh, politicians take decisions sometimes differently, but I think anyway, it's good that it's working like that. Also, legislation is more on general principles now, like unfair commercial practices, and we can use it in every area. We, we think that it's bad for consumers. And we go to voluntary actions from entrepreneurs. And this is just, I will not talk, uh, but if somebody wants to know about the consumer policy, how it should be made, there is obviously the document with good practice uh, about you have to know the problem and how you should measure consumer detriment. And for example, you shouldn't act when there is no detriment to consumers. And you also can, can choose from different kind of policy measures. You don't always need law. You don't always need licensing or prohibition. You have to... Um, you have to look which is most uh, most uh, effective for the specific problem. And very often I think it's uh, education of consumer, information of consumer, because if uh, consumers are act differently, uh, we cannot do anything, just, uh, just teach, uh, teach them um, what's good or bad, but, uh, but uh, we cannot be like... Um, helping every people on every moment. It's never, never works, yeah. So that's different methods we can use. 
Um, yeah, these are new new directives which we which are on the table now, uh, which yeah, I will not. And at the end, just some challenges for us. But what I see as uh, as, as an enforcer is that we need very wide knowledge. As you understand, it's not anymore electric product only. It's no electric product if IT features. Uh, they are even talking to in other, uh, in other products and so on. So we need very clever people in our, our agencies. Um, yes, we, we have to use different methods for different problems. So we have to think about behavior of people. Uh, and uh, we need cooperation with businesses. Uh, we have to take into account that products go through the borders quite easily. It's a good thing from one point of view, but that's difficult for us. And the most important, we need educated and enthusiastic people. I hope someone here probably wants to, someone works in Consumer Protection Center and someone wants to work in Consumer Rights Protection Center and help us to tackle these challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Tabai Bavito, Linja. Do we have any questions? No? Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a question about uh, privacy issues. Because at the moment, all that GDPR stuff is quite popular and uh, the issues of privacy also solved by Data Protection Authority of Latvia and also member states. So do you cooperate with each other or how do you split your responsibilities with regards to such privacy issues, for instance, in smart products or with, the, with that doll? Uh, yeah, thank you. Very good question. Uh, we, st we try to cooperate with the state uh, data inspection, but I have to admit that they are very busy at the moment. <laughs> they have many other tasks. Uh, I, I would say that at the moment what we use is that uh, if we really see problems, for example, when it's contract terms, and in contract terms there are some problems with privacy, like you give your data or something like that, we would uh, tackle it as unfair contract term and we just use the knowledge maybe from data uh, institution, but we have our own uh, possibilities to tackle it. But when you speak about doll, it's nobody has yet uh, invented what is it because there's, um, there is no really legislation about this issue concerning how, the, for example, what, what can you do about that. For example, when it's product safety, from my point of view, then we can uh, ask, recall products from the market and uh, or give warnings or change something. But with security, uh, with these risks, it's not yet clear what we can do. And, it, and the state uh, data inspection, they cannot, they do not have really that kind of legislation to take out products or something. So I think that's something either to be um, tackled in the legislation or also through the some, I don't know, some thinking how to do that. But it's not on our market, at least in a market I have seen. Probably people buy it from, uh, from Alibaba or somewhere, but I'm not sure. Well, you've mentioned the problems with consumer credit in Latvia, and uh, well, indeed, this is a Europe-wide problem. Um, the consumer credit directive, which is indeed based on this information paradigm, encouraging mm. uh, to uh, give as much information to consumers as possible, is currently under review, so we will see what will come out of that. I will take up this issue in my presentation this afternoon, but I, my question to you is perhaps you could elaborate a little bit on the problems faced uh, by consumers here in Latvia with consumer mm. credit. Like, are these um, banking or non-banking institutions that are causing most mm. problems in terms of, well, poor credit worthiness assessments and, um, well, mm. and, well, irresponsible lending more generally, mm. please? Yes, thank you. I think in Latvia it's mostly, uh, our competence mostly is non-bank uh, institutions and the, the problems I mostly see is related with small payday lending or short-term credits or how we call it in Latvia, fast credits, which are very uh, expensive and uh, you have to give it in uh, one, uh, all the sum you have taken you have to give at the, after months, mostly after months. I see that the problem for people is not so much how high are these interest rates, which our government, uh, our politicians uh, now 
have sold. It's just uh, 25 percent, 28 uh, allowed from 1st July. But the problem was that um, that uh, people always have to give all money back at the same day. And that's a problem for those people who use this kind of, they could give maybe 50 euros back, but they cannot 400. Even uh, I think for people who have earnings, 400 at the same day is quite high. And that's I think that's the method of this. And again, that they can just prolong it and you just prolong uh, short-term credit, which is expensive. And if you would uh, take another credit, uh, which is for free or for six months, it would be much cheaper for people. But people choose them because they are very easily accessible. Uh, and they're, uh, I think, because also because their money, they give money not to require you to buy products, because products then they normally have this. So I think from my point of view, that's, that's the biggest issue, not even the interest rate, which we, we, we regulate, yeah. Any other questions? No? Okay, then we will thank Vito for coming for a very interesting presentation. Thank you.